All right, you guys, I'm gonna pick this video up here. This morning, I spent the entire morning getting the car out of the dirt. So as you saw in the last video, it was kind of a controversial video, and I knew it would be, because I obviously did not put my car in the right spot. So as you can see, it's back up in the air. There's nothing wrong with it, nothing happened. I got I was a little overdramatic, I'll admit that. But anyways, car is back in the air. Um, I actually had to use a cherry picker, get it on the front end, because the car tipped forward. So it kind of went diagonal, so I had to pick it up, spin it, and then get it back down. So you can see it's straight. It's kind of parallel with the concrete there because um, it was about two feet in that direction. But I got the car back on the air. I have wood now. All you guys telling me wood, like I never knew what wood was, it's here. I got it all braced on the bottom. So you can see there was kind of a hole there. So I actually have a ton of wood pounded down in there that actually makes everything level. It's all beat down, make sure it's, you know, solid. So there is actually a bunch of two by fours and two by sixes underneath. You can probably can't really see them, but there's a whole stash of them underneath this thing. So this is actually level all the way out to here. Um, so we're good. So I actually got the front end back down, have a cherry picker supporting it. I'm lifting the back end of the car up right now so I can get jacks under the axles. But the whole point of this video is we're actually gonna make a wood jig for this car. So what I mean by that is I'll put a photo up if you haven't seen it already. So these are very common in like a lot of shops that you know want to get a car super high up in the air, but you don't have a lift. Um, so you can actually set the wheels on these. I don't know what the actual name is, but it's basically like a Jenga block setup uh, to where it's a bunch of two by four stacked, you know, perpendicular to each other all the way up um, you do two by two by two all the way up as much as you want um, and then you can go ahead and set the wheels it two pieces will be up top, up top and you can actually set a wheel uh, right in the top of it so it actually works out pretty well so I'm gonna do the same thing on this car I'll put the two rear wheels in them and then I'll probably put two up on the frame where the front jacks are um, but the whole point of this video is I'm gonna show you guys how to make them so we're gonna get right into it all right one other thing I noticed is you can actually see the side of all this tire is actually pretty tall um, and then this is a front, which is not quite as tall, so you can kind of see the difference in the sidewall heights. If I go to the other side, this one has a short sidewall. It's not nearly as tall. It matches the other one that's off the car right here. So I noticed that there's two different height tires on the back, so hopefully no one ever drove it on this setup. I don't really see why they would. Um, the car wasn't going anywhere, but still the point would have been that they would have just kind of burnt up the diff pretty quick running a different size tire in the back. But either way, I'm gonna swap this tire on so it's not, you know, sitting in the dirt, hex has air in it. I'm um, considering there's no way to put a front wheel on, I might as well put it on the back. Straight as frick, man. Why does he always do that? Oh wait, I do it too. Gosh, do you have to rev it every single time? Yeah. Yeah, I do too, I know the feeling. <laughs> Race cast. All right, guys, I got everything fixed. Car's on wood. You can see I have a plywood down. So my jacks in the rear are on plywood. My jacks in the front are on plywood. Whole car is sitting on wood, as it should have been in the first place. I'm very aware of this. So now I'm gonna go get a tarp so I can cover the thing. Um, and then we're gonna begin building a carport so I can actually you know, have water and sun and everything off of it. So I'm gonna pull this thing out and get it assembled. Yeah, so I bought one of these, you know, carport thingy majiggers from, you know, the best place ever, Harbor Freight. Came with instructions, we're not gonna use those. There's a lot of tubes. And I'm gonna be honest, I haven't built a Lego set in a really long time, but uh, let's see if I can get this together.
<laughs> all right you guys well looks like we got it all figured out as typical faction we did not really read the instructions we did it completely backwards as you saw we had to put the cover on while it was already up in the air You're supposed to put that on when it's on the ground craig big good job anyways uh the car's all up in the air back where it should be so now the only thing that we're gonna do um i believe it's gonna rain tomorrow so it's actually in a good spot um, cause I, I brought a tarp. Oh, that's just, I just remember that. I bought a tarp for no reason. Oh, well. <laughs> Anyways, well, I guess I might as well still put the tarp on the car. Tarp the car. Uh, the reason the windows were down in the last one was cause this one's actually off the track. And it fell off the track again, damn it. So, those ones are up. So all the wheels, or all the wheels are up. All the windows are up but that one. Um, but I'll still put a tarp over this. Cause I got a little 10 by 20, or, or uh, 10 by 16. I'll put over the car. And we should be good to go. Got plywood down there. Everything's good. Okay fixed everything from the last video we are good we're back on track i have new parts coming for the front suspension the last piece of the puzzle and everything can go back together be one big happy car again all right guys here comes the fun part of the video uh this is the whole point which we're actually making jacks for the car as i said earlier so these are 14 uh, eight foot two by fours. These are just generic two by fours. You can get them at any wood store, or wood supply store. Basic two by four is all you need. So depending on how how tall you want your jack, uh, that depends on how much material it needs. So basically, uh, what we'll have here is we'll cut them, and I believe they'll be around a foot tall, maybe a little bit more. Um, we'll kind of see in the end, and I'll measure it and tell you guys. So basically, eight, uh, 14 eight foot two by fours right here in front of you. What you see here, and we're gonna cut them into sixteen inch sections. So. Um, and you can cut them in different lengths, but the 16 inch gives you a good platform for a tire to sit in. Um, Cause I'm, you know, a radius of a tire is pretty large. So typically you want um, at least, you know, a foot. Foot's a little bit narrow. So 16 inches gives you the perfect amount of clearance for when two of the two by fours are sitting on top of the jack, the bottom of the wheel will fit in perfectly. And if you don't understand, you'll understand when they're done. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Also 16 inches on uh, each cut allows you to use an entire board with no wood left over, no tiny pieces. Uh, when you have eight feet and you divide it up like that, it makes it really nice and you don't have any spare wood left over. So everything you see here will get used. So I'm gonna start laying these out, mark them out in 16 inch sections and just cut them all up in a bunch of little tiny wood pieces and we'll start putting them together. It's actually pretty easy. Fishing, you don't have to measure each bore. You don't want to measure uh, 14 of these. You don't have to measure all 14. You can actually stack them. You get a quick square if you have one of these. And if uh, your quick square is tall as the, the rest of them, as you can see, this one's just about as tall as the five I have stacked here. You can go ahead and measure out your 16 inches and then just draw straight down the side. It makes it a little bit quicker. You can kind of go down more amount of time. So I can now do five at a time rather than one at a time. So it makes the process a little quicker. You don't have to do it though. So now you probably see I kind of just laid them this way. This way actually worked better if you lay them down. Keep the ends, you know, measured and then just kind of go down. And you can see my line every 16 inches I put a line there. And uh, I'll go ahead and cut these just to make some room on the table so I can do these other ones. All right, guys, so as you can see, I got a pretty good amount of them done. Uh, so this is the last little bit, but I wanted to show you guys this before I cut them. So just in case you're confused, every 16 inches, so 16, 32, 48, 64, and 80 inches, then it'll go back to eight feet. So pretty much that's just the measurements, just in case you were confused. I don't know why I needed to point that out, but just in case you needed them, that was them. So we would cut these and uh, start making these into some Jenga blocks. All right, guys, so here's the fun part. So I pretty much got uh, a bunch of general, you know, galvanized. They don't destroy themselves. They're just a simple three-inch screw. I got a screw because, you know, nails can pull out over time, and I don't want to nail my tire. Uh, so I spent the money and got screws instead. So I got three-inch screws because each board is two inches, and you want it to go halfway through the second one, but you don't want it to be a two-inch screw, so they poke through the bottom. Uh, yeah, so I got three-inch just so it gets the job done. That's basically what I'm going to do. Let's just take four of them, stack them all up. much to make them square my cuts are for the most part square as long as your cuts are square everything will work but you know, isn't that perfect i got this nice dewalt bit this actually slips over so it keeps everything nice and level it's kind of cool gotta try that out so pretty much i'm just gonna do this for the next like hour <laughs> All right, I got one done. This is a uh, 10 tall, 10 two by fours tall, if I can count right. Um, the only thing I'm gonna do is, since the tire is gonna sit roughly in between these two, I'm gonna cut 
out of some spare 2x4 I have lying around because uh, obviously we don't have any left over. I'm going to use one that I already had and I'm going to cut a little piece that goes in between here so it's going to be solid right here. Uh, so that'll allow extra support so this one doesn't cave in because this is where all the support is. But when you have them stacked like that, they're not going to collapse. Although I wouldn't use this on like a 7.3 international dually crew cab. I probably wouldn't use wood anyways. I might use like a semi-brake drum, the big metal ones, and make a metal stand. Um, but this works perfectly for your, you know, under 4,000 pound vehicles. I mean, this car weighs 3,500 loaded down. Right now it weighs around 2,000, but it'll stripped out. So this will work perfect for what I need for. So I'm gonna skip the process of making the other ones because obviously, as you can see, got a quite a few to make. I got three more to make. So I can skip the process, come back when they're done. All right, guys, we got them all finished up. We actually brought a nail gun up here and switched to a nail gun specifically for the fact that it's actually raining right now. Well, it's starting to rain and it's gonna get a lot, lot, lot worse. <laughs> so we just wanted to get these done real quick. Uh, so as you can see, they're all 10 high. Um, they measure out to be, for those who are curious, that is gonna be, so it's 14 plus two, they're 16 inches tall. So 16 inches tall, that means you can get your car 16 inches up. Um, the whole point of these is if you don't have a lift you want to take a transmission or something heavy under the car out rear axle or well not really rear axle but something heavy under the car you can get the car up in the air pretty high with these um and they're a pretty stable way so the reason now you can kind of see what i was talking about so the wheel would sit us so like this and i have the secondary one right here to kind of help out support um and everything works together pretty well so i mean if you like them cool if not i understand you know not everybody likes these i like them a lot more than jack stands because jack stands has a point of contact that's like super small and then these have a big wide 16 by 16 inch area so just kind of why i like these a little bit better so it is getting ready to rain so i'm gonna go ahead and move these around uh, get the car set up you can see we actually got canopy i'm gonna stick down the canopy tarp over the car wood under the car everything's all prepped up so <laughs> All right, guys, well, with that being said, I gotta start cleaning up. It's about to start raining. It's gonna rain for the next three days, so I've got the car um, in a good spot to where it should be good. Fingers crossed. I don't know why anything would go bad. There's a ton of wood in the car. Everything's all prepped up. Everything's watertight, as it could say. But anyways, um, the only thing we're gonna do from here is we're probably gonna coat those in some sort of paint so it doesn't get corroded really easily, um, and then we'll be good to go to use them. So, like the video if you did enjoy. Let me know what you think about them in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video of this car. Bye, guys.